Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to get information about a server, like the number of players online, the maximum number of players online, the MOTD, and uh, other different information like that, um, which we can use. Now, you might notice that this is not a plugin, and it actually has a main method. Um, I'm going to write this. Uh, as if it were a program, but you could easily just copy this code and paste it into a um, bucket plugin, and it would work the exact same. I just don't feel like uh, making it into a plugin, so this way um, I'll just go ahead and run it to demonstrate that it works. But uh, you can just copy and paste it exactly the contents of the main method, uh, and it will work very well. Um, so, what we're going to do is we need to first write uh, a big try and catch because uh, when we're like connecting to another server and asking them for information um, there's a lot of different things that could go wrong the server could not be there uh, could not return information uh, could return the wrong type of information or I could we could be expecting one type of information and it gets another there are tons of things that can go wrong so we need to surround this inside of a try and catch uh, because there are lots of different things that could go wrong and we need to be able to handle them. Um, now this does use some elements of networking like sockets which we're going to do right now. Um, you don't need to completely understand how all of that works. That would be something more for a Java 101 um, mini-series or possibly even a Java networking series. So don't worry too much about this part. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and define a socket which is just a um, basically a connection to another um, web service. Uh, and the socket is going to take, I believe, um, well actually we'll just go ahead and use the default constructor. So we're creating a socket, then we're going to say socket.connect new inet socket address, and it's going to go ahead and take in first the IP address, um, which will be localhost uh, at port 25565, um, then it will take in, oh sorry, it'll take in the IP, then it'll take in the port separately. And then outside of this, it's going to take, we're going to give it 1000. So we're connecting to localhost, this INET socket address is saying, we're having the socket connect to localhost at port 25565, and this 1000 is the um, timeout. And 1000, it's in milliseconds, so that's going to be one second. And that's all that you're really going to need for a successful connection, uh, but you could change it. I'll go ahead and write 1 times 1000 just so you can tell that it's one second. If you wanted to allow for uh, up to two seconds before it connects successfully, you would change it to be two times 1000 or just 2000. So now the socket is going to go ahead and connect and hopefully it'll work fine. If it doesn't, we're in a try and catch so we'll get the stack trace, but that should work fine. Now we're going to go ahead and um, we first need to write out a piece of information uh, sort of like we're asking it for the information and then it's going to give back the information. So we're first going to write a data output stream uh, which is just used to output data um, out is equal to new data output stream and it's going to be socket dot get output stream so what we're doing here is we're taking this we're making a data output stream which outputs to the socket so when I um, you know write something to this data output stream it's going to write it into the socket which will then be received by the server we also need to do a data input stream because we want to of course receive the information I'll call it in and you guessed it it's a data input stream with socket dot get input stream so now uh, if I try to read something in it's going to go ahead and read it from the input stream given by the socket first thing that we need to do is we need to say out dot write 0xfe and this is gonna look really weird um, but that's actually a number and I believe if we hover over it it might no alright so it's not gonna tell us uh, but that is that's just a number and it's the particular um, information that we need to put in okay so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say while I believe it's in dot it's either ready or is it has next 
Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to define um, an int called b, and we're going to say while b is equal to in.read is not equal to negative 1. And we need to surround this in parentheses. Then we're going to say if b is not equal to 0, and b is greater than 16, and b is not equal to 255, and b is not equal to 23, and b is not equal to 24, then we're going to go ahead and say, actually there's one other little piece of information. We need to have a string uh, builder called data. So this is going to uh, it's just a string builder, and it's going to read in all of the data. Then we're just going to say uh, data dot append, and it's going to be char b. Okay, this might be a little bit confusing, but here's what we're doing. Um, this um, int called b. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I just called it b. This is basically um, each little piece of information uh, that's given to us as an integer. Uh, now, integers and characters, you can cast between them because a character um, is actually pretty much the same as an integer, but just a letter representation rather than a number representation. Each character has an integer assigned to it, and each integer has a corresponding character. So first thing, uh, this while loop might be a little bit confusing, uh, but the way that it works is first it sets b equal to in.read, and while it's not equal to negative 1, negative 1 means that we're done, there's no more information. So first we set it equal, then we test if this new value is not equal to negative 1. If it isn't, then we have this if statement where we want to um, basically eliminate any of these bad um, values. So it can't be 0, it can't be 255, can't be 23, can't be 24, and it can't be greater than 16. I don't exactly remember why this is the case, but I think that we want to skip those um, particular variables, or sorry, those particular numbers. They're probably, as I said, each character corresponds to a, um, to a, each integer corresponds to a character, so I'm guessing that those particular um, uh, characters for the integers are things that we want to ignore. So don't really worry um, too much about that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and say string array data is equal to, st uh, or data, sorry, we're going to call this Let's just rename this to be str. And then we're going to say string array data is equal to str dot two string first of all. Then we're going to split it at the section sign, which as you know is also the color um, of, it's the color sign used in Minecraft. Now I think if you have a colorful um, MOTD that this might not work. I'm not completely sure though. I have tested it before um, and it does, I believe, work. Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and define variables for each of the different things that it gives us. And the order is very important, the order in which it gives us everything. Uh, the first thing that's going to give us is the um, number of online players. And this is going to be integer uh, that value of data at position 1. Oh, that's right. Also, um, the MOTD um, is data at position 0. So the first thing that it gives us is the MOTD. Then it gives us the number of online players, which is the second piece of information. Then it gives us the max players, which is data at position 2. So that is the um, third piece of information there. And looks like that's it. So now we're just going to go ahead and for this particular test, we're just going to go ahead and print out, um, we're going to say... Uh, the server's MOTD is, and then we're going to have it print out the MOTD. We'll actually surround that in single quotes so we can tell. We'll say it, um, the player count is, and we're going to say online players plus division symbol, um, and then max players. So it should say the server's MOTD is a Minecraft server or whatever. Then it'll say the player count is, and then it'll say maybe 10 out of 23, or 10 out of 30, and it will tell us how many players. So if I go ahead and run this, uh, then as long as a server is online, 
then it should work just fine. So now let's go ahead and actually put one of these servers online. Um, I guess in this case, I want to use the uh, server at 25565, which is server A. So let me go ahead and start it up. All right, so the server is starting up right <coughs> now. It should take only one second. It should take only one second to get started. All right, we're good. So now let's go ahead and run the program, and let's see if it'll work. Okay, uh, it says... Server's MOTD is a Minecraft server. The player count is 0 out of 20. Um, let's just quickly validate that. Let's go into server.properties. Um, as you can see, the MOTD is a Minecraft server, and the maximum number of players is 20, and obviously no one is on it. So as you can see, this uh, rather strange block of code actually does work. It successfully gets us the MOTD, the number of online players, and the number of maximum players. So this is how you get um, that particular few pieces of information um, from a running Minecraft server. Uh, obviously, if you were running the plugin and you wanted to get it from the same server, I believe Bucket, yeah, Bucket will have methods for get online players, get max players, and get MOTD, so you'll obviously be able to do that. But if you want to get information about a different server, uh, this is how you would do it. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding videos. Bye, guys.